All right. As bikers, we all know that unexpected things can happen. True. Mm -hmm. Now, many of us are prepared for a mechanical issue with our beloved Cruise Tools roadside emergency repair kits right from the Law Abiding Biker store. Got to have one. But more serious than a motorcycle breakdown lurch, an injury to you or someone you're riding with. Now, why would you risk not being prepared for that, bikeaholics? Ask yourself that. Well, that's why we brought the Law Abiding Biker First Aid and Trauma Kit right to our store at a very affordable price, I might add. So, we're really giving you no reason not to be prepared with this small and easily storable biker prepared first aid kit. Yep, we really thought this biker first aid kit out to make sure it had the necessities without overdoing it to keep it small and storable. Kit comes with everything you need. Everything. Such as a plethora of different size bandages, gauze, compression dressing, medical tape, latex gloves, whistle, scissors, rescue blanket, and more importantly, a military tourniquet. And we all know that can absolutely save a life. And all these items are inside a very tightly packed tactical nylon molly bag measuring only eight by four by two and a half. That's right. Kept it very small. We know that's important. And best of all, you know, it's our design kit. It's biker tested and biker approved. It has our name right on the outside of the kit for that reason. Now, this is not something you should have with you at all times, but a must have at all times when riding. Get the Law Abiding Biker First Aid and Trauma Kit right in the Law Abiding Biker store. Hey, and if you end up using it and you want to tell a story, please drop us a line over at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash contact. Now, although the perfect kit, there's another emergency you might not have, but it might not be first aid worthy. Mm, well, it kind but, of depends. Well, nonetheless, depends on how bad it is. It's still an emergency. Yeah. And so the only thing. You could get like a burn or something, you know. You could. You could. Or maybe you could get uh, like some uh, poison ivy. You could. Or stinging nettles. I mean, this could turn it into. It could turn into. It could turn into. In itself, it's not a em medical emergency. No, I will, I'll agree with that. But it is an emergency. But it could end up, yes. And so the only thing I would suggest adding to the kit, and you could also get it, that's right, is a travel, a couple travel dude wipes. That's right. Minty fresh butt wipes over at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash fresh dash butt. That's forward slash fresh dash butt, B-U-T-T. -T. No additional cost to you, but if you buy dude wipes, we do get a small commission if you use that link. Use them here in the studio, of course, but I think that would be a good addition because I have seen Lurch make a emergency stop on the side of the road in an emergency run to the woods. I can't be the only one out there. No, no. Uh, it's eventually probably going to happen to me, uh, but it has happened to a lot of bikers. It can take you down. And uh, why would you not want to prepared? And uh, you can ride away. That's right. With a minty fresh, but I would add those to your kit, but you know, it's your call. If you don't consider that an emergency, then, uh, then don't, but uh, we didn't want to put those in the kits. Uh, Cause again, it's not technically an emergency I'll be adding one medical to my kit item. When I get home. Abs one. Uh, probably four. I would see yeah, exactly. <laughs> However, exactly. many that uh, will fit in there. I could not agree more, Lurch, on that. So here's the dealio. That's right. You're leaving for a trip. You're like, I got to have that law abiding biker first aid and trauma kit in my life. Ryan's right. Lurch is right. I'm an idiot. I should have that. I'll admit, I've been an idiot in the past. I rode for years without a first aid kit. And I should know better because I'm a first responder. What was I thinking? So you've made up your mind. You're like, they're right. They're right. I'm not going to be an idiot anymore. I'm going to get it. I'm going to carry it. And it could save a life. But you're leaving for a trip. You're like, you reach in your pockets, nothing but lint. That's right. And maybe in a uh, dude wipe, maybe one travel dude wipe. You're like, I got no coin, but I need that kit. Well, have no fear because you can still hit that buy button and buy it right freaking now because we have shop pay installments right in the Law Abiding Biker store. It's integrated in there. You can buy it knowing that you can pay in four equal payments interest free. So you can pay when you get back from your trip or however you want to spread those four payments out. It is over there. You guys asked. We brought it. That's what 
we do for y'all. I got Lurch. mail. Yay! Looks like we've got a got email Yay! you've drug into the notes here that you want to discuss. I have, and this is from Dustin Kettlewell. Dustin says, I recently recently purchased, purchased whew, boy, I'm starting out great today. I recently purchased your handlebar install video for Dynas. I'm planning my install and have a question for you. I have a 2012 Dyna Switchback FLD. I was wondering if you may know if the control plugs for the FLD are under the tank on the frame like the other Dynas, or since the Switchback has a Road King front end, are they in the headlight assembly like the Road King? Also, on another note, I wanted to thank you for producing such a good video. Prior to watching the videos, uh, I doubted that I could install handlebars myself and was going to have a shop do it. Mm. Now I feel confident that I can do it with another person helping. That is awesome. And, and thank you for taking the time to give us some feedback on it. We appreciate that. And that positive feedback helps us uh, keep doing this kind of stuff to help other bikers. So our response was, they are located in the neck under the f- tank. Thank you for your kind words about our video. Your appreciation was what keeps us making these videos. And then I also gave him a link to Harley's website uh, that shows the schematics for his bike. Noise. And I know we were uh, doing some administrative stuff at the coffee shop this morning and uh, Lurch handled this. So uh, he looked that up and uh, very cool. And so at any time, guys, head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Harley handlebars forward slash Harley handlebars. That's where all of our four very popular, very detailed handlebar install videos are. It doesn't matter what model of Harley you have or what year. Those videos are very universal. We made them that way so they will work for all bikers. You just pick the one you want and uh, which video will work best for your project. But a lot of them are very much the same information um, because handlebar installs are a very universal procedure once you know certain rules and things that you follow while you're doing it. You can really do any bike and you will save yourself about $1,500, $1,200 to $1,500 at the dealership for the simple price of that video. You can watch it over and over right while you're doing your install. Lawbindingbiker.com forward slash Harley handlebars. We will get you through that and you will have the pure satisfaction of wrenching on your own bike and telling all your biker buddies and girlfriends that you installed those yourself based on our video. Girlfriends plural? girlfriend or girlfriends oh, okay. maybe boyfriends if you do if you, if you want to be politically correct maybe boyfriends I'm just or saying, maybe boyfriend i don't know i'm just saying you're, you're saying plural girlfriends and it took me a second to think about it but if you are the only the type of guy that does his own handlebar job and can talk his about own hand it, job handlebar job oh, handlebar job gotcha. that's the kind of guy that would have multiple go- girlfriends yep true wrenching on your own ride having Penny the satisfaction droppers. and sharing it with other bikers yep that, that's, or a boyfriend, maybe a chick's out there doing it. Could be. Yeah, yep. absolutely. There you go. And uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, also... So basically what you're saying is if you buy our video and do your own handlebar job, you're, you're going to get more action. There you go. Okay. Guaranteed. Nice. Lurch will guarantee it. If it doesn't, email Lurch directly and tell him uh, he failed you. Matt at lawabidingbiker.com. There you go. Tell him he failed you. And also, so that's our handlebar videos. And don't forget all of our videos, including the handlebar videos and all our other premium videos detailed tutorial videos over at lawbitingbiker.com forward slash buy videos. And our website's very easy to navigate. There's a menu up top. You can go to videos and find all those. If you can't remember the URLs. You want to ride longer, Lurch? Yep. Ah, are you tired of a sore and achy ass? Yep. Nope, fix it. <laughs> right now with a high quality butt buffer seat cushion. That's right. We love them. Tried and tested over thousands and thousands of miles. Miles, guys, on many trips, I don't leave home without it. Lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store. Check out our full line of butt buffer seat cushions. Oh, yeah. Once you've had Rick Rack, you'll never go back. The Ultimate Motorcycle Luggage Rack Solution. Forget those messy straps and bungee cords. Go strapless. So the Rick Rack Quick Attached Luggage System quality bag. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store and check out our full lineup of Rick Rack bags. Rick Rack. Mm. Hey, Mike Hollick, 03 has a wide variety of innovative products for your Harley Davidson and a brand new line for the all new Honda Goldwing named Gold Strike. I like gold. Top quality, affordable chrome lighting and comfort products. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store. Check out our full line of Zero 3D products. Mm, let's get into this episode. What do you say about that, Lurch? Let's do it, buddy. I'm ready. Mm. 
Got a great episode for you guys. Mm. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's a rocking episode. Oh, nicely done. Welcome back, you freaking bikeholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority, the big MM, also known as the 99% large and in charge of the motorcycle scene. More than any time in history, by being here, by listening, you're part of what we call the hashtag biker revolution. We have just one question for you before we get started. What are you waiting for, bikeholics? Mount up and let us take you on another wild ass ride. Ryan Erlacher here, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast and your high-tech redneck. There you go, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to get right into it. We are pumping out the videos on the YouTube channel, Law Abiding Biker, or excuse me, YouTube.com forward slash Ryan Erlacher or Law Abiding Biker.com forward slash YouTube. Get over there. We're pumping out the videos and we're almost to 200,000 subscribers. Please sub. It's really easy. It's free. It doesn't mean a lot these days um, to YouTube algorithms, but it means a lot to us. It lets us know that we're continuing to serve bikers and it just shows some social proof. We'd love to bust that 200,000. Be part of that for us in 2023 here. This is a new free video of many that have come out, but we wanted to mention Lurch is going to tell you about it. Now, this one is how to install a rocker housing gasket on a Harley Davidson. Those pesky things that can leak from time to time. We show you how to get in there and do it. And uh, we do all great angles, you know, good video quality, nice and clear. All the steps without skipping any of the steps. And you can get the link to that in the show notes below. That's right. Very detailed, completely free as 95% of the content we actually put out is completely free to the biker community. Love our sponsors up front. These folks are also a direct reason they are considered sponsors that this is coming to you after 10 years. There's some of our newest patron members that signed up and are getting some great benefits. We got Natasha Goolsby of Cape Girado, Missouri. We got Bowen Raglan of Elko, Nevada. Bowen is top tier. And Lita Teeples of Houghton, Houghton Lake, Michigan. Uh, moving on with Jimmy Despain of Crestview, Florida. Randall Stewart, he's a top tier. Randall Stewart of Las Cruces, New Mexico, top tier. And Mark Lesher of Portland, Oregon, also top tier. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Pledge a certain amount per piece of content. No risk to you because you can put a monthly cap. There are benefits for uh, signing up, such as T-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group, which is a troll-free zone, guaranteed. Nothing but bikers helping and meeting other bikers in there. You get access to live video broadcasts and chat, podcast months early before everybody else, store coupon codes, top tier access to those premium videos up on request, and of course, access to those ride meetup and events. We appreciate you considering becoming a patron member. We can better serve you, get to know you, and give you those benefits that everybody else is receiving. Mm, Main topic today, guys, we're going to dive in. It's going to be all about the Hardy Davidson audio powered by Rockford Foz Gate. All right. So we'll give you a little background on this and kind of how we did this. You want to start with this? Absolutely. I talk a lot. You do talk. Sometimes mm. you talk too much. Yeah, yeah. I fall asleep over here. I do. I do. <laughs> I mean, it's just because we've been friends for so long and I, I, you know, I hear your voice so much. It just mm-hmm. kind of soothes me and puts me to sleep. That's nice. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, if you do or do not know, uh, we've done a lot of audio systems here at Law Abiding Biker. Um, we've done the original Boom Audio. Uh, we've done Hog Tunes, Cycle Sounds, J&M, uh, Sounds Baggers. Rockford Audio. Rockford Fosgate powered. Uh, just Rockford, Rockford Fosgate, Fosgate yeah. yeah. The non HD branded. I think that's all of them. Uh, but we've done several of them and uh, we've done installation videos on all of them. The one thing, the one that we haven't had the opportunity to work on yet is what they call the Harley Davidson Audio powered by Rockford Fosgate. So that is the HD branded, or I should say it's co branded with Rockford Fosgate. And uh, we reached. Uh, we had we had a talk earlier this year with uh, our one of our contacts at Harley Davidson, and he wanted to know what we were interested in working on this year. And we um, we had told him that we'd be really interested in doing an installation on that uh, Rockford Harley system and uh, doing a review of it because we have a lot of questions about it. And we'll get to the different components, but um, he was gracious enough to send us up a, a system to install and review. And in my mind, I was thinking I, and I did, I wasn't specific during our conversation. I just said, we'd be interested in installing a system and, and putting it on, um, my 2015 road glide. So in my head, I'm thinking an amp and fairing speakers. 
and uh, I kind of forgot about the conversation. And all of a sudden, boxes started showing up at the studio, and you started sending me pictures of this. And you're like, "What did you order?" <laughs> I said, "I have no idea." So you got into it and said, "Dude, there's there's speakers, there's saddlebag lids, lids, there's subwoofers, there's all kinds of stuff in here." So I got really excited about the project. Um, but what we did is we installed, in a nutshell, and we'll kind of break it down as we go along, but we installed the uh, their Stage 2 fairing speakers and corresponding amp, saddlebag lid speakers, and um, subwoofers in both the saddlebags and an amp. So it's, it's quite the system. Now, Lurch, up front there a minute ago, you mentioned all of the different uh, videos that we have, the premium videos that are super high detail they are for purchase but we'll get people through those installs where would one find those forward slash buy videos there you go all of our premium videos including our uh, system install videos are over there now to back up just a little bit uh lurch mentioned um we did talk to the hardy rep um you know we're working with them these days on some different projects and it benefits us our audience and of course it benefits them so there are kind of some mutual relationships there uh, for content on the channel. And uh, now I honestly, uh, when we were talking about this, we wanted to get a new system. Now, Lurch, Lurch's system on his Rogue Glide, you had the uh, rock for or the uh, boom. Boom audio. Boom audio stage two. Mm-hmm. It was the one amp and the fairing yep. and uh, two speakers. And we did a video. That's one of the install videos we have. Now, that system failed you. The After amp? how many years? Oh, uh, it was, let's see, I got that in 16 and it fell last year. So four, six years. And so we're definitely not saying that's indicative, but that's what happened to Lurch. Yeah, the amp, to be specific, the amplifier fried. The speakers are fine, but the amp died. Um, I, was, I was riding down the road and all of a sudden it cut off and wasn't making any sound. I could switch over to my headset profile and it was working so i knew it had something to do with the amplifier i pulled the few, i opened up uh got in the seat and got all the crap out of the way you know the ecm and the battery tray and all that stuff and uh, found the fuse and it was blown and i put a new fuse in and as soon as i turned the bike on it was popping it and so i removed the amplifier and uh took the the casing off of it and i could smell that it was burnt inside so something happened and it fried Yep. And again, we, we're not saying we haven't heard like any wide, uh, you know, conversations about that happening, but it is what happened to us. And the to the best of my knowledge and research, that boom audio system is made by MTX. They made the speakers and they made the amp. And while it's definitely better than your stock stuff, um, and it's, e- it's pretty easy to install. It was all plug and play at the time. Uh, it's just not quite to the level of, of, of Rockford Fosgate. MTX is a lower level brand as compared to Rockford Fosgate. Again, big improvement, um, but didn't mine in particular just didn't quite hold up. So it left us in a uh, gave us an opportunity to mm-hmm. do a new installation, and we'd had quite a bit of questions about the uh, new Rockford HD stuff. Yep, as you know, Hardy got in bed with Rockford um, and started partnering branding with them. And uh, so it was, uh, we were actually very curious about it. We love stereo systems, um, just playing with them and tweaking them and seeing, you know, what kind of audio is available out there. So interestingly, uh, when we went into this conversation, Lurch knows a lot more about this stuff than I do. And he at least knew it. I just knew they were partnering with Rockford Fosgate. So we threw it out there and we're like, hey, uh, if you're interested in sending us a kit, uh, I had no idea that cost of this thing yeah uh, but i said for I just, the whole kit that we installed for the whole yeah. kit so i just told him i said hey if you want to just send us a kit we'll do an install of course we'll promote it and give our honest opinions about it and they're obviously uh very happy with it and back it they weren't worried about that because you know it's a quality system it is made by rockford but uh i had no idea uh, we were so busy at the time and uh i think it was after that we started looking for a building and all that kind of stuff. We had a lot going on. We there. had a lot going Still on. Still do, but yeah, that particular time we were and busy. Yeah, we were busy. And so I didn't think a lot about it or even what they were going to send us. I should have, you know, looking back in hindsight, like we didn't even talk about just front system or yeah. just rear system. I was, or, I was just going under the assumption 
that they would just send the front speakers. And I don't know why we assume that. Well, maybe because that's what the bike has on it. I mean, the bike without, without doing some modification, which we'll get into, uh, the road glide has two speakers in the fairing and that's it. So that's what I assumed they would send. Was yeah. just that. I'm grateful that they. I don't know why. Out. And I it, have no excuse why I thought that. I should have known that. Yeah. They want us to install a system. They're going to send us the whole system after hindsight, yeah. right? And I'm glad they did because uh, you know we got questions about the subwoofers and how they sound, and we'll get into that as we talk about first the installation. We needed to do and that. How the sound. We really needed that because people had asked us, and we couldn't give them a really good answer. Now we do yep. have one, so that's it's been very beneficial to us. Yeah. And we've done a lot of systems and we've even done saddlebag speakers, Boss Audio, uh, which we have a video on, uh, on Cowboy's bike, but we had never went full and did the subs. So, right. yeah. So, you know, we wanted to just kind of see, uh, especially how they sound. But anyways, expensive ass kit. Uh, we'll get to the pricing at the end. Write that down if you would, so we don't forget to go over pricing to kind of give you, or maybe you have it in there already. Uh, I don't. I'll I have it in the show notes, and we've got it in uh, the uh, um, Evernote. Evernote, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we the the like Lurch says the boxes started coming in, and then I realized, yeah, Lurch, you got the full meal deal, and we appreciate that. I want to thank Hardy Davidson for uh, sending that stuff out to us. Um, no strings attached, just. Send it to us, and you guys do what you do with it. And uh, uh, so, yeah, so we started. Uh, uh, we're obviously going to put this on Lurch's bike. Now it's made for a, a street glide, an ultra, a road glide. It doesn't matter. And, of course, I just want to mention up front, before we start breaking down some of the details on this, of course, this was an entire film project. And we did a lot of shorts uh, and Instagram, TikTok, behind-the-scenes type stuff while we're installing. And if you're not following us over on those platforms, make sure you do give us a follow over on Instagram at law abiding biker. We're putting out a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we're not putting out anywhere else. Of course, TikTok at law abiding biker. And of course we're still rocking on Facebook law abiding biker. If you're a Facebook uh, over there and uh, uh, where else lurch, I think that's it. Twitter at law abiding biker. And then of course we're doing some shorts on YouTube too, but uh, the Instagram, I really like that platform and we have a lot of fun over there. And if you want to see a lot of behind the scenes stuff, get over there and give us a follow while you're over there doing some reels over there and things like that. But we did a lot during that time. Uh, but we filmed the entire thing. Uh, it is an edit as the date of this podcast. I need to do some final reviews on it. We are going to put that. So if you like this podcast um, or it's a system that you're interested in, uh, this would be the video to get because you're going to save a ton of money uh, installing this yourself. And with our very detailed premium video, it will be a for purchase. Have no doubt you will absolutely be able to install this system. So we filmed it all. That's coming. And then also on the YouTube channel, when the weather gets a little bit nicer, we did ride a little bit today. We'll get into that. Oh, wasn't that fun? Oh God. Yeah, it was. It's, it felt the, good. The weather's been horrible in uh, the Yakima area. We don't usually, we get snow, but it doesn't tend to stick around all that much. I mean, we got it in uh, mid to late November and it stayed. In fact, there's still some out uh, right now, but the roads are just clear enough that we can get out and run up and down the road on that thing. And it was a uh, hot uh, today. It was 40 degrees. Yeah. It was 41. That's a hot day for us. Cause we've been down in the 20s to teens to zeros. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I told you earlier, I just had a smile on my face the whole time I was out there riding it because I, I hadn't been on it. And every every uh, new year when I get to get on that bike for the first time, it reminds me of why I ride. Yeah, buddy. Well said. Well said. Um, but with that said, what I was getting at with the weather is that uh, we are going to, as soon as it warms up a little bit more where we can be out there, we're going to do a full review on the YouTube channel of this thing. I, I would call it more of an overview and review of it. And uh, so that will be for free on the YouTube channel. So you can kind of get a look-see at it and our thoughts, opinions, how it works, uh, what we think of it. Uh, We're going to give you some opinions at the end of this. We'll give you a review on this podcast um, of what we think of it, which is why we rode today uh, to give at least a little bit, but we're going to, we want to spend some more time with it. And before we do the YouTube video, and uh, so be looking for that, guys. That will come out um, if you're more visual uh, and you want to follow up to this podcast episode. So with that said, uh, what else do you want to say about it, Lurch, before we get into kind of... Yeah, let me get into some yeah, sure. the, the components and some of the specifications. And before I do that, I will say that uh, having the boom audio before 
in my opinion, the boom audio was uh, sounded good. The problem with it was though the amplifier uh, was uh, too powerful. It was it would overdrive uh, the speakers. Uh, it would you could only crank it up to about three quarter volume and it start distorting. And you, had, it, you obviously you don't want to be distorting your speakers. You're going to damage them. And uh, so that was one of the drawbacks of that system, which this one does not have. Uh, it comes with, uh, well, it depends on how many. It, the nice thing about this system is very interchangeable. You can start with just a pair of speakers and one amplifier. One amplifier will run up to four speakers. So you could um, start with uh, the, the fairing speakers and uh, then add your um, saddle bag lid speakers with that amp. And then if you want to go all the way, you could put um, an either lowers or maybe you got an ultra so you want some trunk speakers and then you put the two subwoofers you can run up to eight speakers off of this system and um we'll talk about it the app after the installation is it kind of it took me a little while to wrap my brain around this installation because uh, i traditionally an amplifier will run left and right channels and when you got two amplifiers i assume one would you know one amplifier is going to run the left side of the bike right or, or each amplifier would be cut in half. You know, the left side would be ran by um, the two amps and the right side. Uh, that's not the case with this one. It kind of depends on where you, um, what type of speakers you have and how you set it up. But one, it's not typical. So when we were doing the installation and laying it all out, I had to wrap my mind around that. But we'll talk about that. Uh, one, once we understood it, it made it so that we can tell you about it. And then the video will be clear. I will say... Uh, on that note, Lurch is uh, the video is going to make it really easy. Yeah. But if you didn't have, we were painstaking in the way that we laid this out. Yeah. And we'll pre, uh, uh, present it to you all uh, if you choose to get that for purchase video. And this is a system you're interested in. I like that you said, Lurch said you could start with an amp. You could start with two speakers, and that one amp can then run two more. So you could do saddlebag. What? My point being with that is it's an expandable system. In our video, we do the whole system, but the way we present it to you is it, the video would work if you just did the two. And then when you wanted to add more, you could pick the video back up. And so we did it kind of in progressions and explained everything like, if you're not going to do this, then do this, um, so to speak. It, 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 so it's more universal regardless if you go all the way and add the subs Another interesting thing that I was thinking about is the traditional systems like my J and M, which I'm still very much in love with. It's, it's older than your boom and it's still running really, really strong. Yeah, solid uh, system. Power XX extreme mm -hmm. is all the systems up to this point, especially front systems is, and even the boss audio that we did had saddlebag speakers, but all of them had the amp in the fairing. All right. And so this was a little bit new because this amp does not, even if you're just doing fairing speakers, you're running stuff back and back forward. The amp resides, even if you're just getting one in one of the saddlebags, right? Yeah. And a lot of the wiring for this, um, the amplifiers is all at the back of the bike from the back to the, the battery area. There's very little that really runs up to the front. There's just one cable that runs up the front so that it gets the audio yeah, uh, to take it back to the amp and then back up to your speakers. It's a, yeah, a little bit different. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to see if the amplifiers uh, hold up better. I got to think that in the saddlebag, uh, they've got more protection. They're not up in the fairing. Uh, but we haven't had one say, other company fail. Just the one boom audio. I know, yeah, but that's what I'm I saying. So I I'm wonder. Just curious. Yeah. Do, do they take up some in your saddlebag? Absolutely. They melt. They they uh, mount to the rear of your saddlebag, and so it takes up. Uh, inch and a half, two inches. Yeah, of your fair. saddlebag. So it does take up some, but it's not an insane amount. But getting to the components, the front sparing front fairing speakers. They're amplified three-way speakers. Uh, they feature a durable injection molded woofer and a separate bridge-mounted mid-range and tweeter. So they've got uh, the the uh, mid and high separated from the the lows, if you will. Even though that's a small speaker, doesn't have a whole lot of lows. It, it is a two-way speaker or technically three-way. Uh, each speaker is rated to handle up to 150 watts and is designed to deliver outrageous volume with less distortion for amazing sound at highway speeds. They are waterproof. They're a vibration-tested six-and-a-half-inch uh, waterproof two-ohm speaker 
and they feature injected molded woofer cones with high flux. And this is might be something I'm not sure what this metal is, but neodymium. Neodymium. Where are magnet, you reading from, by the way? From our Evernote. Okay. Magnet and a 20 millimeter tweeter and 30 millimeter uh, mid range speakers. Very quality speaker and a great sound. Great sound. And mm-hmm. what, what? And I, I. We'll get to that too. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. And and I, like I mentioned, it doesn't. The way they've dialed this in, it doesn't overdrive the speakers, which is nice. And then moving back to the uh, lid speakers. And well, if you, you can just pause right there. Hey, Bikeholic, searching for new and exciting motorcycle products. Sir 3D has the products you dream about for your bike. Check out their wide variety of innovative products for Harley Davidson and Honda Goldwing motorcycles. Sur 3D's got your back with chrome and black parts, lighting, and other comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding for an easy installation. That equals less time installing, more time riding. Sur 3D. Uh, has a design team of riders with over 40 years' experience with a passion for design and innovation. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. They pride themselves on great customer service. Got a question? Get in touch with them. Sales at zero 3D.com. Give them a call 715 808 0027. Check out your local Hardy or Honda dealership and ask for Zero or Gold Strike parts. A new leader has emerged. That's right. So check out Zero 3D's custom line of Gold Strike products for the all-new Honda Gold Wings. Better yet, help support us. Head over to lawbindingbagger.com for a store. Check out our full line of Zero 3D products. There you go, guys. Uh, yeah, so dive back in. We're moving into saddlebag lid speakers. Yep. So these are uh, the Stage 2 speakers. So if you had a, a Stage 1, you want to upgrade them. If you've got a bike that already has a saddlebag speakers, it'd be a pretty easy swap out. Uh, on uh, my bike, Road Glide Special, that did not have any saddlebag speakers, Harley has made a uh, color match. You can order uh, saddlebag lids that you can replace your um, stock ones with, and then it's it creates a a basket. Does that sound right? Mm-hmm, in, yeah. In the saddlebag that you can mount the the speaker and the, the grill, and it it fits nice. It's flush. It looks beautiful. Uh, but those have already cut out for you, basically. Yeah, they're ready to go. They're, yep, they're ready they're, to rock and roll. ready. So uh, what they say about that is these amplified three-way speakers feature a durable injected molded woofer and a separate high bridge mounted mid-range and tweeter, so similar to the front speakers. Uh, each speaker is rated to handle up to 150 watts and designed to deliver outrageous volume with less distortion for amazing sound. And outrageous volume. Waterproof. They are a 5 by 7 waterproof 2-ohm speaker, and it's got the same uh, molded in- injected cone and the neo dimium magnet. Whatever. Yeah, what he is. said. Yeah, must be some space age metal. It's an effing magnet. Yeah. Again, good quality speaker. Kind of what you come to expect from Rockford Fosgate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you feel them, when we got the stuff out of the box, uh, as we started unpackaging the, and mind you, which is an interesting point of how the system comes. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about that. I'm just making a note. But as we started um, unboxing this stuff and I didn't get too crazy with it because Lurch was organizing this project. I was just filming and I didn't want to disorganize everything. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. It, it, I, I could just see me throwing all that stuff on the workbench. It was complicated enough as it was just because we've never done this exact system and we wanted to, and remember we're not just throwing it together. We're doing a video and we have to think like how, how do we best uh, teach this? Uh, so uh, but I started realizing this is quality shit. Defra- everything from the harnesses, we've done a non-branded Rockford before and we found it to be high quality. Mm-hmm. And so they didn't, it may not be the cheapest system, which we'll get to, but it is not cheaply built. No. Uh, this is the top of the top shit. Like you're buying a high, high quality system um, where everything is thought out, engineered in very detail. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm making a note here, so I'll go back to it. Um, Everybody Lurch is making a okay, note. Okay, you, you cover for me for just a second. Uh, let's talk about the amplifiers and what Harley says about the amplifiers. Because uh, we did two uh, for this project because, uh, remember, we're doing the full-on system and subs, and I can't wait to talk a little bit about that. But they call them powerful, intelligent amplifier technology engineered to perform. And I think what they mean by intelligent is, is, uh, well, it works with the uh, uh, equalizer on your phone, so they're smart there. And then you can take, which we'll talk a little bit about, you can take components off and the system still understands that you've removed subwoofers and it still plays fine. And like they, I mentioned earlier, it doesn't quite um, 
it's not the normal setup with left and right and front and right. back and through the app we'll talk about how you do that but it plugs in a little bit differently than you'd expect so yeah. it's smart in that that aspect intelligent intelligent yeah yes so we just wanted to give you why they're saying intelligent well, we'll we will get more into that in a moment but uh, engineered to perform in a demanding motorcycle environment this new compact amplifier is easy to install in the motorcycle saddlebag as we mentioned 50 watts per channel times four at 40 ohms four ohms four excuse me four ohms 100 watts per channel times four at two ohms and if that doesn't mean anything to you well welcome to the club no the watts mean something to me but i always ohms are always over my head dude but whatever yeah it's been a while i, I since I've really paid attention to what the ohms mean, but uh, I believe at two ohms there's less resistance and you have more power or vice versa. But the two versus four ohms is what changes the the uh, watts per channel from 50 to 100. That's it. Scientific yeah. explanation right there from Lurch. Yeah, you don't need to worry about that. Cause Are you done making notes? Yeah, you don't need right. to worry about that because they give you the speakers and the amp, you just plug the shit in. So right. you don't need to worry about all that. But we'd like to give you some of the specifications, especially for the audio nerds out there. Subwoofers. Okay. Um, so glad they sent these. Um, when we first started doing some of the uh, social media ramp up for this, a lot of people were like, yeah, it's pretty cool, but you're going to lose all your saddlebag space. Yes. We will talk about that at the end. But no. Yes. Yes, yes. and no. We'll, we'll yes break all that no. down. Let's stay to the install on the, okay. yeah. So these are designed for 2014 and later touring bikes equipped with the Harley Davidson audio powered by Rock Fate, Rockford Fosgate audio. Uh, these plug and play. 10-inch subwoofers enable heart-thumping bass while cruising around the city streets or out on the open road. They can be installed as a single subwoofer or dual subwoofer set, which is nice. If you don't want to take up both your bags, then just go with one. You're going to have half the boom, but that's okay. The entire, uh, we were, we're going to talk about that later. So, okay, plug and play, design, easy to install and remove, uh, power lock cut out for the CVO models, which is nice. So the top of the subwoofer enclosure uh, will handle those CVO model lids. And they don't list the wadding, uh, the watts wattage on HD's website, but I'm going to guess they're probably capable of at least 150 watts a channel, like the other ones, so that they don't they're not overpowered. Sound good? Perfect. Okay, you want to get into the installation a little bit? Wherever you're going with okay. it, you did most of this, so I'm kind of just secondary on yeah, this absolutely. particular uh, episode. Yeah, well, I just kind of I want to. I filmed it. Yeah, you did a great job. And I too. understand it, but yeah, and you did most the, of the 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 figuring out. Yes, um, but you know, as the person that's doing the video and doing the editing and trying it, and you know how you're going to present it and um, make sure that it makes sense to the audience, um, you and I go at things different angles sometimes. Yeah. So between the two of us, we're able to lay it all out and put it in a manner that's easy to digest for the viewer. Mm -hmm. but, Wish and, we'd have had a video. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Would have saved absolutely. a lot of a lot of thinking. Um, you know, on this podcast, we're not obviously going to be able to tell you every step and, and you're not going to be able to install the system by listening to this, but we can give you an overview. And if you, if what's you involved, to, basically, yeah, exactly. If you want to do the installation, obviously get the video. Um, so I, as I talk about the system, I may not go in, in, in the order of installation, but I'll probably, what I'll do is work my way from the front of the bike to the back on the road glide. The fairing speakers are simple to change. Another reason to buy a road glide. Hmm. I know you disagree, Batwing. I love fan, them both, but um, I love it, all of them. They're so easy. Just pop the grill and you unscrew the old speakers, take them out, put the new ones in. Bada bang, bada boom, you're done. Uh, with the um, Batwing fairing, you need to remove the speaker boxes uh, from inside the fairing. And in our video, we show you how to do all that. So don't worry about. It. So it's a little more involved, but um, other than that, the speakers themselves are the same. And then the amplifier, we mentioned, you had mentioned earlier, they're not mounted up in the fairing. Um, and which, you know, I don't know if, if it was a decision to, now that I think about it, I don't know if the decision to put them in the saddlebag was to protect them more or because you couldn't get two in your fairing. Probably. And, yeah, I hadn't thought about and that. And your subs are back there anyways and, yeah. and your power and those yeah. back there. So they'd moved everything to the rear is yeah. what I think. Yeah. But. So uh, in, in the previous installations, there was a lot of stuff up underneath the f uh, fairing that you had to plug in. But on this one, basically, you, you've got a main harness that uh, uh, plugs into your, um, you're basically splitting your speakers, your wires. So you take your out from the boom and that goes back to the amp and then it sends it back up and goes into the speaker. So it's simply just splitting it. 
And then it's got another small harness that you have to run forward to get some remote power and then also to tie into the right hand grip to get into some of the controls. And uh, then you run that down the spine of the bike. Uh, you do that by removing the fuel tank and uh, the wiring um, organizer lid and you run it down that trough. So that's the main part from the, the fairing and then moving on back. Now, once you're at the back, everything else is at the back of the bike. Mm -hmm. Again, if you were installing... It's a lot of harnesses. It's a lot of harnesses in the back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, so, uh, one of the things you had mentioned was the way that the, the system comes. Um, and some of the other systems, when you order them, they just send you everything that you need. I was going to get to... You, yeah. We can do it now. Yeah. It's fine. I was yeah. making notes to kind of wrap all that up and stick to the installation. Okay. okay. If, if that... If that works. Yeah. However right. you want to do it. Yeah. You're the host. I think, well, no, it's fine. Let's just stick with the installation. Yeah, we'll talk about that pricing, okay. how the kit comes, what we don't like about it, what we do like about it. Okay. At the, I think that'll be Perfect. a better format. Perfect. Uh, the saddlebag lid speakers, if you have a bike that already has them, then it's easy. It's a quick switch out. If it's, if not, if you have a bike like mine, then you need to replace the uh, speaker bag lids. And uh, you can get those from Harley Davidson color matched. It's a pretty simple process to switch out the lid itself. Um, we've got, uh, we've got that in the video. You've got to, you've got to undo some bolts and screws. And, um, one of the things that we did find out that was a little bit tricky was, uh, moving the latch over from my existing, uh, bags to the new ones, the way that the baskets designed for the speaker to drop into, it's really close to the latch. And so it was hard to get a tool in there to tighten the screw back down from the inside of the, um, latch in, into the handle itself. Um, but we used our handy dandy van pliers to turn that thing back in there. So you got a little bit creative with those. Um, and once you get that back on the, the, the lids, all you do, do is drop the speaker in and then you uh, drop in the, um, the, 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 the uh, cover. So pretty, pretty simple there. Um, then it comes with the wiring kit that you've got to run the wire back to the amps. And real quick, if a lot of you won't have any clue what he just said about vampires, but if you want to know what those are, head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash vampire, just like vampire, but vampires, very handle tool that you must have in your toolbox. And that's a little affiliate link. So uh, we won't explain what they are, but that's, that's where you can check them out. Yeah. We actually went down to a local uh, fastener store and tried to get some different fasteners so that maybe we could get a 90 degree um, uh, like a Phillips driver in there still was enough room so you can get the screw in and you can hand tight it, but you've got to use some type of, um, something you can bite onto the edge of the screw with and turn it. And those vampires were outstanding. Uh, and then, so the pretty simple wiring for those, they just connect to the, the speakers. Um, the, they, they adhere to the inside of the uh, saddlebag and go back to the back of the saddlebag where the amps are located. Now's where things start getting a little interesting because mm -hmm. um, you got to mount your uh, your amplifier to the bulkhead and to the back of the amplifier bulkhead is what holds on to the amplifier. It's the harness and it it sticks to the back of the uh, saddlebag, the inside of the saddlebag with 3M tape, sticky tape. Uh, so that that's pretty easy, but you've got to be able to get all this wiring now in mm. and, in and out of your saddlebags. So this is the first uh, thing that we did that, uh, only, you know, it's, it's a little nerve wracking at first, you know, just because you're drilling holes in your saddlebags. But um, you've got to drill two, uh, I think, if I believe they're two and a half inch holes, but two holes with a hole saw to make a place for the wiring, the, the connectors to mount mm -hmm. on the inside of the saddlebag so that you can plug them into the outside of the saddlebag. The system's set up so that you can, unplug uh, and take your saddlebag off when you need to. Um, but it comes with a template that uh, lines up really nicely. You just put it, you, you, you place, you put some of that blue painter's tape on your paint just so it doesn't crack um, or, or you don't make any accidental scrapes in your paint. And then you lay the template over and um, tape that down so it doesn't move. And then you can use a punch to punch all the different spots where you need to drill and and I got to tell you, while a little nerve wracking at first, I can tell you if you're about to do this project, don't be worried because it lines up perfectly. Mm -hmm. So then you have to, um, so there's the amp and then there's all the wiring that comes from the amp and then it's, it bolts to the, your saddlebag and now you've got a couple of connections on your saddlebag. Now in comes the wiring harness. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a bit of, of connections. They're all labeled pretty well. 
Um, but depending on your setup, you know, you've got to plug. Something. Did you want to talk about the other cuts you have to do in your bags was, while you're on bags? Gonna, or okay, you, you, that, right, yeah, cool. I'll get to that when I get to the subwoofers. Um, uh, so it, it, the, the harness runs up along uh, the, um, the, 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 I don't know if the, the strut, a fender strut, and then it go, it tucks in behind the, the uh, fuse box. And uh, you, you basically use the void around your battery to put all this wiring. Uh, what we did is we brought it up through, um, and then we made all our connections. And once we had all our connections uh, done, then we were able to tuck it down. And it takes, it's quite a bit. It pretty much fills up the void around your battery on both the left and the right side and, and in the front. Um, and then on the other amplifier, same thing. Um, it mounts in the same way to the back of the, the saddlebag lid, drilled the holes, and then we, there's a harness for that amplifier. So each amplifier comes with a harness. Essentially, the, 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 the saddlebag, or excuse me, the um, amplifier in the left saddlebag is the main amplifier. So that's the one that hooks up to the front of the bike and brings all the sound and whatnot back to the, to the bike for the amplifiers and also sends it back up to the front speakers, but it also sends it out to saddlebags, speakers, um, subwoofers, and the, you know, the other amplifier. They share, you know, in essence, they share some of the signal and whatnot that comes from the front. The difference between the, the left or the main harness and the right harness is the right harness hooks into your CAN bus. And so we show you how to do all that. That hooks on the right side. Um, and then the next thing was the left side on your bike. Well, the, no, the left no, cam bus. The cam bus was on the right side. And then the, the, all the other stuff was on the left side. By your fuse box, yeah. your cam bus plugs. We plugged into those. Oh, sorry. Wrong bike. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you right. for correcting no, me. No, no, that's right. I just, on like a, a, yeah, yeah, I'm glad you see. So what I was meant to say and went off track a little bit there is on the 17 and newer, you hook under the cam bus on the right, right. side. Thank okay. you. On the, on the 14 through 16, you hook into the cam bus on the left side through one, the data link. Yes. Yeah. Okay. On the right side, they've got, it's got a can, can bus connection. Yeah. The newer bikes are in. coming with some extra plugs on yeah. the right side, kind of four kits like yeah. this is what I think they put it there for. And we had, we had, um, a kit for a wiring kit for the, um, 14 through 16. We've got one for the 17 and up. So we're able to show you both of those. Yep. So we, we had both on, on hand. Yeah. 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 Thank good. You. Appreciate that. Yeah. No, Thanks no problem. I was trying that. to remember all this. It's coming back to me. Yeah. It's a lot. It is a lot. Uh, and then, then the woofer installation. So stand by. Okay. We got to do this. Are you searching for the easy? Speaking of bags. Yeah. Quickest detachable luggage system for your motorcycle. Rick Rack has just what you're looking for. Forget all those frustrating straps and bungee cords that can come loose and slap your paint. Slap your old paint. Check out some of Rick Rack's awesome quick attach strapless luggage rack systems. This father son team designed something really special. Yep. You can't find it anywhere else. Guaranteed. Yep. These guys ride so they truly understand the needs of bikers. The Rick Rack quick attach system is strong, durable, and secure with a lockable system. Also, Check out their full line of quality touring bags to accompany your quick detach system. Once you use Rick Rack, Rick Rack, you'll never go back. What are you waiting for, bike colleagues? Head over to the Law Abiding Biker Store and check out our full line of Rick Rack systems and bags. And we will be rocking those bags headed out early May 2023 for our awesome Death Valley trip. We've used them for many, many years now. I would absolutely not leave home without my beloved Rick Rack system and quality bag all right so yeah what up bro before we go into the subwoofer i will just mention the bluetooth dongle oh the dongle everybody needs a dongle in their life so yeah this this does not connect to your bike through the whim it connects to the can bus and it connects to an app uh, which we'll talk about after subwoofers through a bluetooth dongle let me show you how to install that uh, and really what that's simple. for is you can connect to your smartphone to your and control this system and set it up right yep, yep. okay absolutely uh so the subwoofers uh 10 inch subwoofers right were they 10 inch i think they're 10 inch yeah yes yeah 10 inch subwoofers uh again you can do just one if you want or you can do both and uh what a great kit they come up with because um it's it, you can just drop it in, pull it out when you need to. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, the the box itself fits right into the saddlebag. Uh, you don't you're not going to have room for any luggage or anything in there. So if you've got two like mine, uh, I've got a trunk that I can throw stuff in. So when I want to be cool and play the bass, I can run around with them both in, um, uh, or I could take one out to have a little more 
space and, and yeah you could just right run back. one you could just run the you left can one. run both you can run yeah. none yeah right absolutely yeah and on trips i will run none um but mo- and about uh, since you're getting into that um talking about this uh and about if you're wondering less than a minute to remove both uh subs right yeah they just i mean they slide in slide simple. out and there's one plug that you plug it in and same with removing your saddlebags uh, since you're on that topic okay and we talked about the easy plugs they put in they really uh thought out well designed uh because um a lot of people we've been putting out shorts on this stuff and people don't watch the whole video or they you know it's a bunch of keyboard warriors uh oh that's bullshit you're never going to travel again oh you're taking up your whole saddlebag where are you going to store stuff and we keep answering the comments uh you didn't wait long enough uh they come out in less than a minute like literally that quick and your saddlebags come off, it would take you an extra two seconds to unplug something. I mean, they really made it so that your bags would come off easy and you could whip those subs in and out of there. So uh, like Lurt says, you're around town, you want to rock and roll, you want some, you know, bass, you're going to a show, parade, whatever you want to do, we're going to be rocking out, DJ the parking lot on weekends, whatever you want to do. They made it super simple to uh, come in and out. So yeah, I just want to say that. So just, Forget all that noise. I, I know a lot of guys don't want to do a system in their bags because of that, but they've really solved that pain point with a system. Yeah, and, and subwoofers may not be for everybody. I mean, it is a motorcycle after all, but, you know, audio nerds like me uh, dig it. So if you like it, great. If you don't, okay. Um, but uh, they are, the, the box itself is sealed. It's waterproof. The speaker's waterproof. So don't worry about getting it wet. Uh, but you do have to get that sound out of the bag. So you do have to cut a vent hole in your saddlebag it's right not in front. a hole okay a vent <laughs> uh, vent channel yeah a channel I, a vent yeah. i don't know what you'd call it it's a, vent. a vent it's a good square. size vent. it's a good sized yes vent it's not rectangle. quite rectangle yeah. yeah it's not quite rectangle but pretty much it's yeah. a little wider on the bottom than the top it fits the uh, contour of the the saddlebag where it goes around your shocks and everything so it's a significant size hole yep that's what she said so <laughs> it's so it's what <laughs> It is a waterproof enclosure. Uh, it does have a vent over it. Uh, you do put a, a quarter inch drain hole in the bottom the of your bag. The enclosure just in case. for the speaker is waterproof. Yes. The saddlebag. The, okay. the saddlebag technically would not Thank be you. 100% waterproof because uh, while the box fits in it and it's got rubber around it, around the subwoofer, if in, a, in a heavy rain, you're definitely going to get some liquid in the bottom of your saddlebags, which um, is no problem. Yeah. Because, because you, you don't have anything hole. else in there. You got anyways. nothing else in there. You put a drain hole, a small little weep hole. And we show you that. Yeah. yeah. So then you ask, well, what the hell do you do if you take the subwoofers out? I just want to make sure the audience, under, I'm sorry, uh, just visually, because they might be thinking, oh, that's weird. The way that we explain that, the the box sits up against the side of the saddlebag. Yeah. The vents to the inside, it's a grate. Mm-hmm. And it's actually... Yeah, there's rubber, so it's actually pretty damn sealed. I just want to make sure, like, yeah. it's not just a box that's not made to contour the saddlebags. Like, yeah. they sealed it up really good, but there is a chance that you could get, right? Oh, yeah, that absolutely. Say it? I know we kind of said that, but I was even confused at my explanation. So, the, so. The, around the subwoofer is a lip, a ring, and that yes. ring has a seal on it. As you drop the saddle, the speaker there you into go. the saddlebag, it is form, it's molded to that yep. saddlebag. Well said. And well so said. it's it's not... It's not technically 100% sealed. It's it. You could still uh, uh, a quite heavy, a bit of heavy yeah. rain. Yeah, a lot of riding. You could get some water in there, but it's not going to be a ton. Um, but when you take the subwoofer out, they've got a cover uh, that goes in. It, it's got two thumb screws that you screw it on, and you cover that hole from the inside, and that seals it up because it's got a seal. 100% sealed. Yeah. So when you're ready to go on your long distance trip, 30 seconds, you pop your subs. Put those on, take another less than 30 seconds, they and bam, you've got your saddlebags back. They're sealed. You don't have anything to worry about, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Well very, thought out. Very thought out. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and again, that um, that cut, uh, they give you a template, and uh, you tape tape up the saddlebag, put the template on, tape the temple down, template down, uh, make all your marks. They've got a bunch of relief holes that you drill in there, and then you follow and while the template's still on. Uh, you follow that with a uh, either a, you can use a reciprocating saw or you know lurch using Ingersoll Rand. Yeah, air air rips, re, 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 reciprocating saw yes. 
Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, it, unlike a jigsaw. It, I just like saying that brand name Ingersoll Rand. It's a it's a great tool. It is no, it's a great yeah, tool. I just think the name it. is awesome, Ingersoll Rand. I'd seen it. I'd seen somebody use it on another video where they were doing some speakers or some lid stuff, and I thought, oh, that would be so much easier. It, it's used a lot for uh, like auto body and that kind of stuff. You can you can be much more accurate and make you know crazy turns and stuff yeah. with it versus it's a, a jigsaw. Tool. It is you know jigsaw is great except. That's it's a bigger tool and it doesn't you know it it, it doesn't quite it doesn't have the, the RPMs either or the yeah this thing's got like was it ninety five hundred yeah. RPM or it something zips, like that man. <laughs> yeah it's like cutting butter yeah I would yeah. highly recommend getting one just because it's it's cool it's cool it's a tool absolutely Hell yeah uh, so th- that that's what was involved with uh, mounting the subwoofers and as Ryan already mentioned they pop in and out with ease mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, one of the cool things about this uh, system is it's controlled by uh, an app. And so once you get everything plugged in, depending on what kind of, what, what year a bike you have, you've got the 14 through 16. Generally speaking, you're going to need to have it flashed at your Harley dealership. You've got the older Boombach version, basically, right? right. The 6.5 the GT 6. touchscreen, yep. right? Yep. yep. And then you got 17 and newer with, or with the GT. 19. Sorry, 19 and newer with the GT. Uh, then you're going to need, you don't need to have it flashed. It's already set up and ready to go. Yep. It just controls with the app. So interestingly enough about mine, um, because I, yes, we'd had a system in it before. It was a boom audio stage two. It had been flashed through a uh, digital technician two to accept that amplifier. So what lurch, let me slow down. Cause a lot of people won't understand. Uh, not everybody's experience. So what he means by a flash is you have to take your bike to the dealership. And Harley has to plug in when he says digital technician two, that's their proprietary software that the dealership has. They're the only ones that can do that for a Harley system. And they flash your boom box head unit to recognize that system. So there you go. Uh, so we uh, made uh, everything I saw. Well, I didn't know it, to be honest, we, everything I saw on the uh, installation stuff said we had to take it down and have it flash. Now in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, I had it flash once before for one amp and, two speakers, but there must be something they need to do to allow to have two amps and more speakers. Uh, So we weren't able to get it into our local uh, HD shop because their one HD tech was uh, out on uh, leave. He had had some surgery, but luckily we called down Tri-Cities and they were able to get us in there. We uh, threw it on the trailer because it was wintertime, weather was crappy, and we ran down there. And they plugged it in. They're back there for a while, and they come out. And they're like, "Ah, I, something, something's not right here. Um, it's not allowing us to flash." And we kind of went back and forth. I pulled up the installations. I showed them the part number that it rec- instructions, instructions. Yeah. yeah, gave them the part number for the the flash and all that. And they went back, tried it again, and they said, oh, "Well, you know, we plug it in. It shows it's got two amps, which is weird, right?" Hmm. Um, so we weren't hundred. We left there with. They were not sure. They weren't sure. Uh, we weren't quite sure. And um, the guys were telling us, well, it says it's got two amps and it's not allowing us to flash anything. And so um, we made the uh, deduction that because of the previous flash, it must be okay. From his from, uh, from his original boom audio system, we yeah. had to flash it at the dealership. And so we assumed that it was the same flash. And because it had already been flashed, the system wouldn't reflash it with right. the same flash yeah exactly <laughs> it was already turned on for to make it simple um so uh, if you have not had anything you got a stock system you'll need to take uh, your if you got the gt you'll need to take it in and get flashed you've got the gts it's it's ready to go uh, but you do need to install the harley davidson app on your phone and it uh, let me see here it's the yep yeah, it's called the harley audio rockford fosgate app and um, once you turn that thing on, you got to turn your ignition on, and then you can connect to your bike through that Bluetooth dongle. And once you've connected, you can it'll walk you through. We 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 recommend just doing the manual setup. We show you in the video how to do it. Uh, what's interesting about this, and we kind of alluded to it earlier, is these uh, amplifiers are intelligent amplifiers. And so what the app does is it sends white noise through a speaker. And uh, there's a diagram of your, before you do that, you got to go through the app and put in which speakers you have. So we went in and put that I had fairing speakers, saddlebag loop speakers, and subwoofers both. And then it starts sending white noise through the speakers and you um, choose on the app which speaker is making the noise and that how it, that's how it knows you know what's hooked to what and where to send the signals and all that kind of stuff. Very cool. It is, yeah. 
very intuitive app. Yeah. Very easy to understand. Well thought out. Yeah. Once we had it hooked up, we were, we were ready to go. And, um, one of the things that we did notice was, so you've got your controls for your, um, bass and treble and stuff on your, um, head unit on your boom unit. Uh, but you've also got them in the amplifier. You would think one or the other would control it all. Um, but we did find that even while you adjust the app, you, you can still play around with it a little bit um, uh, in the, the head unit, which uh, at first I thought, well, that's a little bit weird. But I actually kind of appreciate it because if you're riding down the road and uh, you've got it set through the app for some heavy bass or, or you can have your volume on your on your subwoofers turned up because you can turn them up and turn them down. If you want to make some you know, small adjustments as you run down the road, you can actually get into mm-hmm. your boombox and hit the bass and lower it down. So just something to be aware of because we had had um, – We'd had somebody uh, interact with us on social media and say, "Yeah, it's, it doesn't. It's okay, but it doesn't sound that great." And when we said, "Hey, go into your boombox and make sure you have that stuff adjusted too," and they did that and found that it had quite a bit better sound. Yeah, it does have a full equalizer in the app. Yeah, and uh, so with the system, uh, not only to listen to music, but to adjust the settings and really dial it in. You're going to want your hand, your phone on your handlebars, and there's no better way to do, do that, that, guys. How would you do that? Biker gripper. That's right. The sexiest, sleekest, strongest cell phone motorcycle mount on the market. Sell the hell out of them. Available right in the law-abiding biker store. No proprietary cases. No crazy straps. Eight. 18 pounds grip strength will keep any size phone in there expands very wide we've got uh, control mounts we've got universal bar mounts black and chrome we will meet all your needs depending on what you want to do but that is all we've used for so many years and it came in very handy because we needed to tune this system and of course go through all our song lists so we could test the different levels and things like that um, of not only you know the speakers but uh, or the, the subs but all the speakers and really dial that that system and you'll want your phone up there where you can see that bad boy. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, I want to break down the app a little bit more and we actually have quite a few different things to talk about, including overall review thoughts and things like that. But we got to take care of our sponsors. You want to ride longer? Yeah. I do. Sure. I know well, I do. treat your ass with some respect already, Lurch. Get hooked up with a premium butt buffer seat cushion. This company of bikers developed a super thin hospital grade seat cushion made of solid and elastic materials and it's unlike those gel pads that will leak a puncture the butt buffer is designed not to slide around on your seat fits all motorcycles and stalls in seconds easily cleans and yep help us to dampen those gall during vibrations with plenty of models to choose from they assure you'll have a comfortable ass when riding head over to the law binding biker store check out our full line of butt buffer seat cushions be rocking it again this year third year in a row i've been running that thing on our way to death valley i absolutely couldn't imagine leaving home without it. The more, the older I get, the more I appreciate a comfortable ass when riding long trips and getting rid of those pain points, those pressure points, I should say. All right, Lurch, uh, unless you have something that you wanted to clean up, I'll kind of ask some questions. Okay, go ahead. You good with that? Yeah. Okay. So we talked a little bit, um, we found with all these kits, uh, the multiple installations we've done over time that the paper instructions suck ass. What's your opinion of these and your overall thoughts? Uh, when there is, it, they are confusing and I'll tell you why. It's not that they're horrible instructions. It's just that the way that the system set up and because we were doing so many parts, uh, they are, um, the instructions for the most part are for that, that wiring harness. And so you kind of have to, um, meld all those instructions together to be able to get the different things hooked up. It is high quality, uh, wiring harnesses. They are numbered. So you plug, you know, three three ninety nine a into three ninety nine B. Some of them. And then some of them the we had to use part. like the last, we were guessing on like the left, right member, like, yeah. are they going off the last three numbers? So yeah. they, they make some easy and then yeah. some gets a little com- convoluted. They're not horrible. But Our video will be get better. you through it easy, yes. They can be better. Any any written instruction is, for most people, written instructions tend to be difficult. For men in particular, we tend to throw them away and try to figure it out, yeah. right? Um, but we're most of us are pretty 
uh, visually. Um, we, we understand visually, learn visually mm-hmm. very well. And so that's why these videos are so And great. when it's not coming from an engineer. It's yes. coming from an actual biker. Like, let right. me just tell you the easy way yeah. here. Put this yeah. into there. Put this into here, yeah. And, and, yeah. yeah. So they're not horrible, but they can be confusing. It And, you know, I'm... We were a good. little overwhelmed, honestly. Yeah, at first, not yeah, knowing. For sure. We yeah. had everything laid out yeah. multiple days. Yeah. I remember you on the workbench yeah. laying harnesses. And I said, let's just get over. That's why me and Lurch work get together. We both think a little bit different, but the same, if that makes sense. And uh, I said, I got to get all these laid out, by like, I don't get it. I was trying to do it on the bench. And you're yeah. like, let's get it over by the bike right. and lay it out. And mock so it, that, mock it mock up. It up. And it, then I can visually see what you're talking about. Now, Once you did that, I really started coming together for yeah. me. Now it's, I get it. It's just, it's a lot. So the, the wiring and the way, the way you order is a la carte. The amp is one item. The wiring harness amp is another. The front speakers are one item. The wiring harness is another. And so. Um, what do you think about that? Well, I, I think. Because in t- the past they haven't done it that yeah, way, I right? Talked it about, I talked about it a little bit earlier. Okay. Um, and, and I was, you know, the other kits we got just came with everything you needed. Um, I I do like it in that you um, can build it, the system up a la carte. And the fact that there is a different main wiring harness for the 17 the, or right. the newer bikes and, and one for the older bikes, 14 through 16, I get why they did it uh, from a manufacturing standpoint, packaging. It, it probably makes sense for them. Uh, but, it, but going to order... It can be confusing. That's what I was wondering. Going to buy can, can be Luckily, Hardy confusing. sent us everything. Yeah, uh, We did get one wrong wiring harness, but that was just uh, probably a mess up in what year bike we had. And that actually worked to our advantage because we did. had the newer harness to, to yes. show you how to do it. It um, worked very much to our advantage, yes. Before talking to the Harley rep, I had looked at um, parting out or piecing out the f- speakers and amp for just just those, and I had to go through what I needed. And yes, it, well, you, when you look at the speakers, if you look down in the details, it tells you what stuff you need. So it, it's just not it's not super easy to put it together. Click but and it's, buy. It's, 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 yeah, it's in, not yeah. that easy, but it's not really hard either. Okay, good to know. You went through that process. I didn't. So yeah, I and if you're going through your dealership and, the, and you're telling them what right. you need, they'll order it all for you. Okay, it does come like we said up front. Uh, because it's a la carte, you are going to get a ass of ton of boxes depending on like everything. Like nothing was combined. No, no. Every wiring harness came in a separate box. Yeah, they're every all, they're speaker all separate came in a separate. Well, every, not every speaker. I well, mean, the subwoofers the pairs, came in two different those boxes. Those Yeah, but your other speakers yeah. come in pairs. Yeah, a few yeah. of the speakers, the saddle bag, that's the only thing that comes in pairs. Everything else is absolutely, your amps are separated out, your wiring harnesses, your sub, everything. You're going to get a lot of boxes. Yeah. And it comes in at different times. You'll get one subwoofer and then like six days later, you'll get the second subwoofer. It's not like they send both subs at the same time. It was weird how it started coming yeah. in. I got things in really weird pieces. But yeah. also kind of fun. It's like oh, Christmas, it's fun. Christmas every, every day. day. What else do I got? I kept what saying, else Lurch, what the hell did you, I thought they were just sending us a stereo system. I didn't realize <laughs> it was piece. Like, you know, I knew nothing about this. I thought it was a kit. I Lurch did all, all the research and shit on I this. I should have warned you. Yeah. I was, so I started sending pictures. I'm like, Dude, did what you, is this? What uh, is then this? I opened one up. I'm like, that's a damn subwoofer. I didn't know we got subwoofer. <laughs> I didn't yeah. either. Yeah, it was cool, dude. Yeah. yeah, got us all excited. So what else you got there on your question sheet? All right, so instructions overall, to tie that up because I think I interrupted you. Just Not th- great. Right. Uh, and, and it's... Um, Get the video. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> the hardest thing is when you're doing multiple pieces, how to put it all together. They don't necessarily all flow together. So yep. there's some trial and error there. But again, the video, walk you right through it. Yep. Easy peasy. Yep. Biker style, plug this here because this is the reason. And mm-hmm. uh, But uh, because we've done so many systems and putting our heads together, we obviously were able to use the instructions to a limited capacity and then use our brains for the rest. All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about the app. Uh, as far as that goes now, uh, do guys have to worry about, because everybody is, what if everybody you go to somewhere and everybody has a Rockford Fosgate system and they're paired to Bluetooth? Can somebody F with your system? No, you can only pair it to one Bluetooth device at a time. So, um, if my phone is paired to my, my bike and I'm running the HD app, nobody else can attached to it. Yep. I've got a pin set on it. It's a four digit pin and, uh, nobody else can reattach to it unless I, um, allow them to basically unhook from it. What if I need to get a new smartphone? Then you just, un- you can unpair and repair. All right. Yeah. So I'm not limited there. No, it's not a one-time deal. No, okay. the only, the only restriction is one at a time, which is right. somebody else can't control your, your bike. Well, your stereo system. All right. So 
What else in the app? It seems like I remember it having some, uh, it has the equalizer, yeah. which you can have slider bars and you can do yeah. all that. Also has some common equalizer settings, right? Like rock or what? Yeah, without looking at it, I want to say it's like a seven or nine band equalizer. It's a pretty good sized equalizer. So you can work um, from your highs to your lows to your mids and you can adjust that all how you like it. Uh, and then you can set uh, you can set that as custom. You know your favorite one is the custom. But yeah, you can also then go through the different equalizers, and they've got canned ones for uh, rock, jazz, you know, orchestra, um, stadium, you know, all those kinds of different ones. And you can pick one that you like. I, I personally like to set up my own and pretty much stick with that. And then it's got a uh, slider where you can turn the volume, if you will, up and down on the subwoofers. So if you don't oh, want yeah, quite yeah. as much bass, you can bring oh, it down. Forgot about that. Yeah. 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 It's got a lot of, you can really dial the system in mm-hmm. with the way they've did it, which is good because you're spending a lot of money on the system. Um, and, uh, you know, you're obviously going for sound with this thing and you're an audio guy. So you want the ability to adjust it, uh, you know, that way. So uh, we already mentioned, but I want to clean it up a little bit. Intelligent amp. And just to reiterate, uh, if you're, you know, worried about space and all that, You've got your saddlebags, and that's what's so great about the system. Like we said, you can just run one amp. That You start unplugging stuff and all that, the system, that it's just made to get it. And so you're going to get the same premium sound minus the sub bass, mm-hmm. but the, it's not going to like, you know, degrade the system or it's not going to sound like shit. It's going to sound like the same system without subs, right? Yeah. And then, so, you, and then you can, if you pull your subs... You can even then readjust your equalizer right. to get it how you like it, because obviously it's going to sound different without the subs. The you know the, those fairing speakers and saddlebag speakers weren't meant to have a lot of bass. They have more of that kick drum kind of pop. But uh, so you may, yeah, I'm sure that when I have, when I'm running without them, I'll, I'll adjust a little bit. Yep. Good. Now we love our patrons. We want you to become a patron member because we want to get to know you better. We want you in the private Facebook group. We want to give you all those benefits guys but hey for whatever reason you just want to give a flat donation we never buck at a flat donation you want to thank these people lurch absolutely vincent cajano tim step and jerry bryant of green valley arizona with a substantial donation lawbitingbiker.com forward slash donate we appreciate those donations also on the homepage of our website lawbitingbiker.com big donate button right there helps put a little fuel in the law abiding biker guesting so we can keep running on down the road there you go so wrapping this up one of the most important parts in my opinion is a real biker perspective do you want to do cost before we get there yeah let's do cost that's a good idea so to compare to some of the other systems that we've done that are of the same ilk uh minus the extra amp and subwoofers let's just ilk yeah with the same kind that's uh, you I learned a new word yeah. today. Ilk. Yeah. How do you spell that? I think I, I've never wrote it. I've said it, but I yeah, think it's I L K. I L K. Meaning of ilk or definition of ilk? Okay, ilk. A type of people or things similar to those already referred to. Nice. Thank you. Use a word learn. Thank you. Damn, you're educated. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it a thesaurus. You told me another word last week or something. I was like, uh, uh, so I learned it, but I, clearly I forgot it already. But anyway, I don't have a huge vocabulary, but on. I do hold on to strange words sometimes. Yeah. And I, uh, when I used to write reports, when I first started um, as a supervisor and doing more reports, um, my trying to sound intelligent because you weren't. Well, I wasn't. So my <laughs> lieutenant says, <laughs> "Hey, me, dude, That's yeah, my, my lieutenant's like, hey, Matt, yeah, I, I get what you're saying here. It's not bad." But you heard might, about thesaurus? You might try thesaurus. <laughs> yeah, so thesaurus. if you find yourself using the same word over and over again, change them up. And that, and at first I didn't appreciate the feedback, but then yeah, I, right. I did later on in life. But ilk, ilk I L K, uh, same ilk. There you go. Um, so looking, just let's talk about maybe just an amp and, and front speakers first. Um, a lot of the kits that, uh, which is what a lot of guys are going to start right. with, right? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the and maybe not go past, and maybe not. Uh, a lot of the high end ones, you know, if you start and look at like the J and M and the sounds, maybe the Rockford Fosgate non branded, you know, if you're looking for an amp and speakers, you're probably a thousand to twelve hundred mm-hmm, on yeah, average, fair. maybe a little higher, maybe a little bit lower. Uh, but with this uh, setup, with the stage two speakers, the amp, and the requiring uh, the required wiring harnesses for the speakers and the amp, you're looking about right around twelve hundred dollars. Okay, and so it's it, right in there. It's right in there. Yep. Yep. And it's a, a good quality system. Yep. Now, where this differs from something um, 
uh, like the uh, uh, Boss Audio where you just cut your saddlebags. Um, this gets a little more expensive with this setup because you're replacing your saddlebag lids. I would say that the quality is better and it's going to be a stronger setup because you're not c- cutting a hole and sandwiching it in that hole. You're actually mm-hmm. mounting it into a basket that's all part of the the, the lid. Um, but, you know, those color match lids from Harley are not cheap. Right, uh, they're, right, yeah. They're 400 bucks a whack. Okay. So once you move back and you're going to do it's saddlebag to speakers, more expensive. at least you're going to have to get the lids, right? Yeah, so you're looking at 800 there and then another 400 for the speakers so that you're at 1200 then for the, the speakers. So 1200 up front, front amp, front speakers at another 1200 for the saddle rear saddlebag lid. lids yep. and speakers. Yep. So you're at 24. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then uh, if you want to add the second amplifier, you're at uh, just shy of 600. Okay. And uh, the subwoofers are 700 a piece. Okay. Whew. But you so can just get one. You can just get one. You know, so yeah. half. And yeah. we should do that when we when we do our test. We'll pull one out, maybe yeah. just hear one, see what the difference is. So it's damn near four grand for the whole the whole kit. And that's a lot to come up with. Um, you know, I don't know that I would do it if I didn't have this opportunity just to to install it and review it and put the content right. out. Um but I might, you know, I'm an audio nerd, but I probably would have started in pieces. I probably would have yes, yeah, me I would too. have built I would have built my way back. Right. Yeah, yeah. I would have I would have saved my paycheck yeah. and built my way back yeah. and started with the front and go, okay, I got some coin. I'm gonna add those saddlebag speakers. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm ready for the second amp and a sub and then maybe a sub down the road. That's yeah. what's nice about the system. You really yeah. can build it from base to mm-hmm. or you know, so to speak, uh, from the base front, you know, speakers and then all the way back. Yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about our opinions. So yeah, good expensive system, uh, but it is not, they they didn't build it cheap. I just want to reiterate that some yeah. of the highest quality shit I've had my hands on. Yeah. Hardy didn't F around with this. Um, a lot of the guys are commenting, or not a lot of guys, but I've seen some comments that you're better off to uh, uh, just get a regular Rockford system. Now, you know, non Hardy branded. Yeah, you're going to pay a little Hardy tax on this. I get it, but it, is like thought out and plug and play. Um, so you got to decide that. Uh, we did a non Harley branded Rockford and it sounded phenomenal, but we didn't do subs in that bike. We just did front speakers, right? And yeah. amp. And yep. it was super clear, super loud. A little more involved in the installation. Uh, yes. And, and then, you know, you, we had to flash it ourselves. Yeah. So, which means research. you have to get techno yeah. research and a laptop. Yeah. We show you all that in the video. It's totally doable. Uh, but we did have to spend some, you got to spend some extra money there. But we did get charged at the dealership for the flash too, even though it didn't flash. But whatever. They, they got labor rates. Um, we didn't use our normal dealership who usually flashes for us for uh, free of charge. But nonetheless, uh, so it's just some things to think about. Um, I don't know that any of those guys, that comment, you know, unfortunately it's the internet. And I don't think a lot of those guys at $4,000 have actually, they may have heard a Rockford system, non Harley branded, but I don't think they've actually installed, you know, they're just keyboard junkies. I don't think they've actually installed the system and then felt it, saw it, um, heard it uh, neck to neck with the actual non Harley branded Rockford system. You know what I mean? They're probably oh, just typing shit, you know? It, it, it's, so it's fair I take to, that with a grain of salt. It, while I liked my boom audio, uh, you know, the stage two that I had in there until it failed. Um, it, and it was loud and it, but it overdrove the speakers, you know, it wasn't quite, um, the, the amp was too strong and they didn't have that dialed in. And like I said, it was made by MTX, which wasn't a, a high end mm-hmm. speakers company or stereo company. So what I would say is, uh, because this is made by Rockford, um, I don't know what the difference would be between just their Rockford stuff that they make for for Harley or stuff they've made with Harley. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I kind of like the fact that this was made with Harley and, you know, it just fits and plugs in and drops in. So I guess it's up to you. I, I, I don't know that I could steer you one way or the other other than say this was plug and play and um, it, it fit. Everything was nice. Yep. So here's the point where we get to give our opinions as we wind this down. Uh, we've spent a lot of time in the shop, uh, indoors, really dialing it in, listening to it. We have a lot of experience with audio systems over the years. We've heard a lot. We've ridden a lot of bikes with different systems. Um, and I just want to remind everybody, this is the higher end of those systems. It is an expensive system. Uh, if you got the coin, great. 
just also don't forget recently we did if you want if you're if you're uh, this is what I'll say but if, if you, you want something budget if you, yeah if you want something budget friendly but the best sound for the budget conscious by far boss audio is there and we sell it in our store um it's gonna it's affordable and for what you get and for the price it's amazing does it sound as good as this well no it's a four thousand dollar system uh, but it's, it's damn, damn good. And you would be very happy with it. So there's just a, and we like that. That's why we like testing everything. Cause we get, you know, an array from, you know, budget to the best of the best. And then you as bikers and how fat your wallet is get to decide your audio needs and then how much you're willing to spend. So, um, do you want to, um, give your, you want me to give my opinion first or your opinion and it's up to you. I'll give mine, and okay. uh, as the host, you can follow me up. Perfect. Uh, it sounds really good. Um, I, I actually, we, so we got it installed during the winter, and the weather was shit here. We couldn't get it out to ride for a while. But, you know, we can't we can't not play with it, right? So we're in your uh yeah, It's what garage. you do best, your wife yes, says, every morning. That's true. Well, not every, every morning. Mor- oh, whatever, dude. Whatever, unless every, you're just getting old. Every other, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, but the, uh, the the studio, the film studio, um, as opposed to the podcast studio, uh, is connected to this. Um, but it's to give you the space. It's a two car uh, garage with some extra space on each side and a little extra deep, so it's it's good sized. Uh, we cranked that acoustic sp- foam. It's got acoustic <laughs> foam in there too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but we cranked that to full volume, no distortion whatsoever. Zero, yeah. zero. It was sorry, right up your there. Opinion, sorry. Yeah, it was right up there with you, like the J and M, you know, and the sounds where they they dial it in where you can crank it full blast, no distortion. That son of a bitch was so loud. I had to put. Uh, I was looking for earplugs, and you go, "Hey, use your AirPods." So I put my AirPods in in, in uh, noise canceling mode, and it was still loud. That definitely helped with the mids and highs not hurting my ears, but the subwoofers uh, de- almost knocked my heart out of rhythm. I was standing next to the bike; they hit hard. I honestly did not think that they could hit that hard in a saddlebag with a small vent on them. I mean, they boom. It's a it's an impressive sound. Very clean. Um, very loud, but that, uh, so that's inside the studio. We were blessed enough to, to get on a little short ride today. We rode and have it outdoors and listen to it. That's why I wanted to listen to it on the pod or the pad. Yeah. Yeah. Out, out. So if you're, if you're idling or you got it parked, I don't know how you'd want long you want to run it without being plugged into a battery tender. If you're not running the bike, cause you know, you got two amps and you're pulling a lot of power, your battery may go dead fairly quick but um you know just in the outdoors uh it's loud uh you jumped on it and rode away and uh, i could hear you as you were going away i couldn't see anymore i could still hear the stereo um you know over the the exhaust which my bike's fairly loud it's got uh, um headers and uh titan os 450 slip-ons let me ask this because it's your opinion but i just want to ask so as i'm riding away and you're a fair distance because i have a cul-de-sac and then he i went out to the main road uh how far Can would you, you even s- tell that there's base from that oh, far yeah, distance? Absolutely. Oh, really? Yeah. Not, no a, not a lot. A lot. Okay. It got quieter the farther you got. Right. Um, how would you? How far would you say to the crest of the hill heading out of here? Quarter mile. From here to there, straight shot, quarter mile. Yeah, mm-hmm. I could still hear. I could hear a little bit of the base, and I could definitely That's hear the mids funny, and highs. Dude. Yeah. Um, so you know, uh, uh, others are definitely going to hear it. Um, don't come running into your neighborhood with a full blast unless you know all your neighbors and they like your unless music. Unless you don't like your neighbors, or unless you don't like either them. way, either way, whatever works for you. But it, it's loud; they're going to hear it. Uh, but as far as riding the bike, for me in town, oh yeah, you're going to hear it. You know that if you're going the you know in city speed limits of 35 miles an hour, you're definitely going to hear it. You can feel it; it vibrates your butt as you're going down the road. Uh, you get it really to, okay. I, yeah, right, no, it's yeah, your opinion. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you get to fifty-five or so, and you really start kind of losing not only the bass, um, the feel of the bass, but you start losing the sound. It's not quite there. Uh, it kind of for me, uh, as I was trying to think of how I could describe it, uh, fifty-five, sixty. It definitely has a full sound, fuller than I think it would without the subwoofers. But you're not hearing a lot of it. I think you're leaving it behind. And then when I got on the freeway, I was running 80 miles an hour, and I couldn't really hear any bass at all, to be honest with you. It, uh, it was pretty much lost. But the but the front speakers were fine. I had my full face helmet on, shield down, full crank, ripping down the road. And again, my bike's not quiet. And uh, the exhaust note that it gives off, um, the, the bass kind of gets lost in the exhaust note at that speed. So um, 
great, great around town, decent, maybe on a country road. And, um, and I'm talking just about the base loud around town, uh, decent on a country road. You kind of lose on the freeway. Again, others are going to hear it, but you're not, you're not going to hear it. But as far as the overall sound, uh, running down the freeway, it was, I thought it was great. I, I did. I think the volume was plenty to hear. If you had a half helmet, you'd really hear it. But even through my full face with the shield down, I was able to hear what I was listening to. What say you? Mm. All right. It's interesting. I like, now I want to tell you up front, Lurch and I both rode the bike and we kept our mouth shut yep. until this podcast. So, it, it. so I'm very interested actually to hear your opinion because mine's going to vary greatly. Uh, I'm surprised how far off they are. So a lot of guys, you know, one of the things we talk about is, you know, our saddlebag speakers worth it because they're behind you. Now, one thing we didn't talk about uh, that they did design into this, the engineers, which is nice is the way they fit in your saddlebags. The speakers are cocked a certain way. Yeah. And so they go up instead of just up like boss audio or lot, mo- every other system I've seen, they're flat and the speakers are flat and they go, so they go basically the, the sounds going vertically. Yeah. These are actually cocked a certain way. So they're up and at the rider. And so one asks, well, does that help? Um, because we all know, yes, sitting on your bike, you get that full surround sound because you're not moving. But, you know, once you move, you're losing a lot of that. What we found in the past, and I kind of still stick to it, is once you move it all, you know, uh, unless in town at slower speeds with the boss audio, I did find, and this too, is that yes, you get some fuller sound rather than like my Street Glide special, which just got the JNM Rocker X Extreme front speakers and amp. Um, you did get a little bit fuller, but once you're over 30, 35, it's gone. You don't even know you have, sorry, that's me. I don't even know you have lid speakers anymore. So what I, I was, I don't think we're too far off there. Cause I'm, I was saying, you know, I get around, you know, 50, 55, yes. 60 start, but you were talking about bass, which is, we're going to vary. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Lurch had mentioned uh, about bass. So what I found on Lurch's bike is it sounds, I'm just going to tell you, it sounds effing awesome sitting there on the, in the garage or outdoors on the pad while I was sitting on the bike. Um, the base is good. Uh, I just want to, I want to note this and it might be the obvious, but you're only going to get so much base on a bike yeah. period. And how much you're investing money wise for how much base you want. I basically like my F, uh, Ford F one fifty. We did uh, tens in there in a enclosure, nice huge enclosure under the seat, facing down, and a really sizable amp, and that truck fucking rocks. Yeah, and yeah, you're booming, it, you're booming inside of yes. an enclosed area, right? Versus yes. just throwing that all out to the environment. Yes. Yeah. So that's what I want to tell guys that haven't experienced this: is don't even ever compare it to a car because no, you're just never no, going to no. get that. So coming from my truck, you know, it sounds so great. You basically taking the same size subwoofers, and it's not even a quarter of the sound of my truck. But with that said, I was when we first started r- rocking that thing, I was very surprised that we got that much bass out of a Hardy Davidson. I was like, holy shit! I had a smile, and it sounds great. And at a show, in a parking lot, um, those kind of things, um, it can't be touched. It was amazing, uh, amazing sound. Uh, here's what I did find, though, is, and this is kind of where you got to weigh, what are you doing? Um, once I started the bike uh, and the vibration of the bike and everything, I literally, uh, this is just me, mm-hmm. I wasn't even sure the subs were on. Uh, it kind of lost the boom. As soon as I turn the bike back off, boom, I can feel it in my ass. I can feel, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, those subs. But as soon as I start the bike, the vibration of the bike, I literally had to reach back and make sure the subs were hitting on the thing. I know audibly they were, but I right. couldn't feel anything. It so, was, and that, hey, my opinion, you know. Well, yeah, I'm just saying that might depend uh, on your exhaust setup as well. You know, if you've got a stock exhaust setup, um, it may, you may be able to not necessarily feel it, but maybe, but definitely hear it a little bit more. And like I said, my exhaust is uh, with those big round yeah. pipes. That, it's very throaty. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost in that same range as the, the base. So when you when you give it yeah. some th- uh, thunder res, it kind of washes out the base for the rider. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the first thing I noticed is getting on it. Um, it's loud. It sounds great. Uh, definitely the neighbors can hear this thing. Yeah. And that's what a lot of guys, you know, 
talking uh, some of the comments, you know, when we were doing some of the shorts and stuff is, you know, uh, we don't want to hear your music. You need to get some earbuds, you know, and things like that. There's a lot of opinions on, you know, how loud exhaust is and stereos and whether you're pissing people off. We're not even going to get into that, but I just want to say, of course, there's somebody listening right now going, you keep your fucking music to yourself. Yeah, I get it. I get it. If that's your opinion, we all have them. They all stink, right? So um, we're just testing this stuff. We're not saying whether it's for everybody, obviously. But so once I got moving, um, I was, it's kind of what I expected because I've never ridden a Harley with subs in the saddlebags. And I was kind of curious how well it was going to sound once I got moving. Now I even slowed down and stopped and I got moving again. And this is where I'm going to vary just a, a bit from Lurch and maybe he hears better than me. But once I got moving, especially even over 10 miles an hour, like I didn't even know I had subs in there anymore. Um, I heard the loud saddlebag speakers just like with the prior systems we've done. Um, so you know you have that. Now, once you get up to 20, 25, 30, 35, I found the lid speakers are gone. And once you get up to 50, everything's gone to me. From the back. From the back, yeah. gone. You're lost at all. I don't even know I have subs. I don't even know I have saddlebag speakers. And and we're a totally honest podcast here and YouTube channel. And that's why, yes, Hardy sent us this stuff. And I've already gave you all the pros but I'm not afraid to give you like the real scoop. And it doesn't mean it's not good. It's badass. You're on a bike. And so these are things when you're deciding to buy what you're going to be doing. Um, you know, if you're going to be going to shows, if you're going to be in parking lots and shit like that, and you want audio to impress people, then this is the system. Mm -hmm. But if you're expecting um, this, like I said, this is the best of the best. You're really not going to piece together a better system. Maybe you could piece something else that's less money, but you can only fit so much on a bike. So the, the idle, even at idle without even thunder revving it, I really, the, the, the hit on me was gone from the base. Um, I still could hear it a little bit, but it, but I lost it quicker than I expected. Um, and then riding, at, like I said, even in town. Now the thing is, other people oh, are going to hear this yeah. thing and it's going to boom to the cars beside you. Yeah. You're just outrunning yes. the sound. Yes. You're, you're, you're in front simply of it, outrunning. And you're not in an enclosure like a truck, which right. would hold it in so you could experience it. Yeah. I, I don't disagree with that at all. So that's what I found. So to sum that up, basically great sounding system. You probably won't find better. Um, the cars around you are going to hear it really good. Um, here's what, oh, here's the other thing I wanted and to say. And if you had a passenger on the back of, you know, if my wife's, yeah, right. if my wife's sitting on the back now, she's got those speakers that are going to be in front of her. Booming on her yeah. ass. Well, yeah. But even on top subwoofers of aside, you know, those saddleback yeah. speakers, yeah, the rider loses some of it, but a passenger would benefit from them. Yep. Another good thing to think about. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, get back to what, uh, so what I found is, uh, so basically above 50, you're, you've basically reduced the system to the front speakers and amp. And what I found, I was a little bit surprised. I'm wearing a full face helmet, but I cracked the shield just like I do on my street glide special with my J&M. And, &M. and uh, I would say I had that system all the way up. Now, I didn't dick with the equalizer. I left it where you had it, but I cranked that thing all the way up. And I'm. it's fair to say that Again, my J&M is just a front speakers and amp, but it's louder. Uh, I hear it better. I was really surprised. Not that I couldn't hear and it. It could, it could be a and I, I, again, the adjustment. That's yeah. why I prefaced my, it. The, I, I've got, I had the bass up high, the, okay. the, the highs up high, and then I, keep the, I had the mids kind of in the middle. Because isn't there one setting on there that you can set for going down the freeway? Wasn't there a setting? Maybe not. I'm not sure if there was, but but you, you could put you, it on rock or something. Yeah, you'd, it's going to get rid of some of the base. It's going to put more power yeah, to the highs. We had it set. For so the, we had it set take, for the subwoofers. Okay, so, so take it with a grain of salt. It, you'd be and put more highs and mids into it. Then yeah, it'd probably be louder. Yep. So again, I we only had a limited time on the video. We're going to do mm -hmm. a, uh, some further testing when it's not freezing our asses off. Uh, but we got it out. So so take that part with a grain of salt. It was still plenty loud to hear even at eighty on the freeway. It just seemed like my J&M was a little louder and that's probably simply because I just didn't have time to tweak it. Because obviously, <clears throat> like we say, you're going to lose some of the base once you get going. If you're on the freeway, you're, I can't see it because there's an unable to connect. Oh. Uh, so uh, I'll I'll look just, at it in a sec. Okay. I got to keep my thought. Yeah. So what I would, yeah, I lost my thought. So you, when you're riding the freeway, 
anyways, you can basically, I would just basically get a setting and just completely, <coughs> excuse me, disregard the bass speakers. And then when you got back in town or you're at slower speeds and you want that bass and hit, then adjust it appropriately. Again, why you'd want your phone up on your handlebars. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. And I think that's fair. There is a highway. Um, yes. I knew there was. There. I knew there yeah. was. And you and we hit that in the shop and it really took out all the bass yeah. and those front speakers were screaming. So I should have tried that. So I apologize, everybody. Um, Again, just take that with a grain of salt. That- yeah, right now I have it set for for the for the base, the base, and I had the mids down pretty low because um, we were really screwing right. around with the base. We were trying still, to get yeah, the base, yeah, trying to get the most base out of it. So when we go to do it, yeah, we'll try the highway mode. Yep. I wonder if it'll even change the EQ on my app here to. Let's take a look. But if you want to piss your neighbors off or no, or if you want to be heard going down the road, whether you agree with that or not, if you're one of those, um, then this definitely would be the system for you. But at minimum, um, even if you're not into bass, uh, if you just got that, I think it, I think it would be well worth getting the front speakers and the saddlebag lid speakers, especially in town once above, you know, 35, 40, again, you're going to lose a lot of that, but at those speeds it rocks and it is clean not one bit of distortion at full volume. It's a clean, clean system. So overall, I'm highly, highly impressed. And if you have the coin and you want to get it, I recommend that you won't be disappointed. Yeah, the subwoofers are just a nice to have kind of thing. I don't know that most guys are going to want them. Um, you know, an audio nerd like me is I geek out with them. You know, oh, yeah. we're having fun with the I'm, system. Love we're loving to, it. I'd love to have it. I don't know that I would buy the subwoofers. Um, if if I didn't have the opportunity that I just had, maybe one hard yep. to say, but I agree. Most likely, I would just do one amp, and I do the uh, fairing speakers and the saddlebag lid speakers. Yep. And some further testing we're going to do mm-hmm. on the video when it comes out on the YouTube channel is I'm actually going to ride beside Lurch. We didn't do that today, so we're going to do a lot more testing. But I do. I'm curious riding beside him. Like, how much can I feel that bass? I just want to really get some bigger opinions and we're going to film yeah, all this yeah, and uh, it, it'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be fun being out just testing this thing and pissing people off. I think you'll, yeah, right next <laughs> to me. See how many dirty looks we can get. Right next to me. I think you'll probably hear some bass, but yeah, you're, you're not going to feel it. Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah. I'm curious. It would be weird. You might feel more because you're, Cause especially you're if I stop my... back by your saddlebags oh. where it's behind you. Yeah. So I'm curious about that. So it'll be strange. Yeah. yeah. It'll be fun. Um, yeah. Anything else before we, uh, Close this thing up. Just understand that when you're putting uh, audio on a motorcycle, you need to be realistic because you're going down the road. And, you know, like you said pretty well, the speakers in front of you, you can hear as you're going down the road, the stuff behind you tend to leave behind. So yep. just understand how that works and have a realistic expectation when you put audio on your bike. Yep, well said. And I will be hitting that highway mode uh, when we're out doing some further testing because I am curious about how much that brings up the levels when you are doing 80 down the freeway. Uh, definitely when we did it in the shop, it got rid of a lot of those lows and uh, it definitely got louder and crisper and cleaner um if that i shouldn't say cleaner crisper just it, because it's 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 keying on the tweets yeah. and the mids instead of relying on the bass yeah, right it's, it's hitting the frequencies that are gonna you're gonna be able to hear going down the road stuff yes. that stuff it just gets lost very well said and that's what a lot of the other companies do too is they'll you know promo that on their site is that you know you can't you don't want to put a regular car speaker and amp setting on a bike because that's not the way you're going to hear it. Right. You you got wind noise and the environment. They, they got to they got to be tuned different. They got to be a, a, a built a bit different for them to be optimal. That's why they don't just stick car systems on bikes. There's a reason for that. You got a different some different needs on a bike. Whew. A lot of talking. A lot yeah. of talking. That was good. Oh, yeah. Good, oh, yeah. good podcast. Yeah. I think we uh, oh, I love broke that down good. Audio stuff. Yeah. Don't forget, guys. Uh, you may not know, but we're always adding stuff to the Law Abiding Biker store. This has been in there for a long time, but for all your lube, oil, and filter needs, that's right. You can go and support us right in the Law Abiding Biker store. Same price as you're going to get it anywhere else, but we're running AMS oil. That's all we run. Most of us on our bikes around here, including Oscar and Lurch and I, nothing but AMS oil. I run it in my boat, run it in my lawn track. I just, it's all I use. We've got AMS oil synthetic V-twin motorcycle products right in the Law Abiding Biker store. You can get it, it looks like in a case there. We do have the Twin Power Hardy oil filters uh, with the Easy Nut on them, which is really nice. Uh, you don't have to use that, that oil filter wrench. You can just get the Easy socket on there and get that bad boy off, even if the dealership over tighten it, which you should be doing your own oil changes anyways. But uh, we've also got Maxima Air Filter Maintenance Care Kit. You've got your cleaner. 
and your oil that you put on it there. Um, and uh, yeah, anything else we're doing in there? Lurch. Let's see. Street. I'm going to our store website. Maintenance. Lube oil filter. I just want to make sure he hasn't added anything. Oh, that, those. It seems like we had some more it oil just, stuff it, in there. It, it just depends. Depends on, on whether we can get access right. to it with yep. the supply chain right now. Yep. So yep. he's been pretty good. Uh, Rick, Big Daddy Kane, our store manager, keeps track of what we can get. hide and stuff when it's yep. not available. Yeah, so so that you, guys, you guys aren't frustrated. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, definitely AMS oil in there, guys. Uh, we are an AMS oil dealer, and uh, we'd love to get some of that stuff shipped your way. Yeah, I hope you guys are well. Hope you're out there getting some riding in, and I can't wait for us to be able to test this system a little bit more out riding. It did feel good today. I do want to say it was a short ride, so I didn't gear up, and it was 40 degrees. We had to do a live podcast, and we had to get back, and I literally wore my tennis shoes, jeans. I did put a coat on, but I was wearing shorty socks with my tennis shoes. Literally about halfway through the ride, my shins were throbbing from being frozen, bro. It hurt. Yeah. Straight up. It was bare skin because my jeans were raised up. Uh-huh. I did a dumb thing and I didn't put proper riding gear on. I know. Sorry, guys. I don't normally do that. Those four foot controls probably didn't help you any. You're stretched out yeah, a little true. more than you normally are. True that. All right. My wiener was a little cold, too, but we won't get into that. Peace.